A few days ago, the European Commission presented its proposals for climate policy. Under the title Fit for 55, they were uh, they have formulated a colorful mix of measures to reduce greenhouse gas emissions in the EU by more than 55% in 2030 compared to the reference year 1990. This is ambitious because to date the EU has reduced its emissions by just 24% compared to 1990. In less than a decade, emissions should be saved again by 1.25 times. By 2050, the EU should then be climate neutral. Among other things, it's planned to expand emissions trading to include air and shipping traffic, as well as more severe reductions in the emissions ceilings for industry and these sectors. For road traffic and the building sector, the Commission wants to set up an independent emissions trading system for fuels in these sectors. Why it doesn't simply expand emissions trading to these sectors is incomprehensible. The rationale for this is apparently that the cost of reducing emissions in this sector differ too much from the costs in industry and sea and air transport. It's not clear why this should be a problem. It just makes sense to cut emissions precisely where it is cheapest. Similar specific requirements are made in individual areas of some member countries. Separate emissions markets and thus separate reduction targets for different sectors will certainly lead to inefficiencies, higher resistance from individual sectors and subsequently to ineffectiveness. There are also a number of technological requirements. For the generation of renewable energy, for the renovation of buildings, for emission standards for vehicles and ships, for the charging infrastructure for electric vehicles and for the energy supply in ports. Here too, it's evident that the members of the European Commission either want to dictate everything to the people or have a thorough misunderstanding of the idea of emission certificates. Well, or both. The establishment and enforcement of a strict Europe-wide emission ceiling and its trading make all the technological requirements superfluous probably very expensive and very likely counterproductive. Because of this trade, climate unfriendly technologies are becoming more and more expensive and thus superfluous in the long term. You can trust engineers and business to find climate friendly replacements for these technologies without supposedly omniscient commissioners having to dictate a path for them. Apparently, people in Brussels do not have that trust in the industry. After all, the European Commission wants to promote the storage of CO2 in natural sinks, for example, through afforestation. Three billion trees are to be planted in the next few years. The Commission also wants to answer the social question by setting up a fund with the revenues from emissions trading and proposing that the member states provide the same amount of their own funds for social compensation. The idea is generally to be welcomed, but it would be more targeted if the members obtain these funds themselves by organizing emissions trading nationally and then use them. Finally, the foreign trade policy flanking the quite ambitious plan to reduce emissions still has to be looked at. Here, the Commission envisages a system of CO2 border adjustment for certain products, but by no means for all of them. The idea is fundamentally correct because without such a measure, the so-called rebound effect would occur. That means a relocation of the emission-intensive industries abroad without reducing overall global emissions. The competitiveness of European companies would also be threatened in that case. However, the border adjustment carries the risk of being incompatible with the world trade order and therefore leading to retaliatory measures in other countries. There have not yet been any critical comments from China or the United States, but there have been from Australia. Hi to my Australian friends, by the way. The EU would have done better to promote the establishment of a climate club very strongly with, for example, the US, the UK, Canada, Australia and New Zealand. Then you would probably have had to swallow a few toads in other areas, including maybe Nord Stream 2. Anyone who is serious about climate protection does not need another pipeline to Russia anyway, although there are dependencies on the US side I don't like either. In this respect, the EU and especially Germany 
were not too ambitious in this area. The Commission asserts that it will base these proposals on what it describes as a comprehensive impact assessment. It has also planned to use a total of around 30% of the expenditure specified in the so-called multi-annual financial framework 2021 to 2027 for climate protection. This impact assessment cannot have been too comprehensive because otherwise the Commission would have noticed that its program would firstly be not as efficient as it could be and uh, therefore very expensive. And secondly, it maybe gives some rise to international conflicts. So the conclusion is sobering. The EU will on this way not really be fit for 55. The Commission aims to expand its competence and patronize the citizens. Some German newspapers wrote fat at 55 would be the better term. The member states still have the option to structuring climate protection effectively and cheaply, but this presupposes that the federal government also understands the emissions trading system. But the general election will hopefully have had some impact on some thinking that um, I expect another conservative government in Germany and I expect some changes in the climate policy and some changes in their discussion with the EU because you know that I think quite well of the EU in general but there, if there is something to criticize like I did today I will and I will continue to do so even if there's a lot of good there's always not always light everybody knows that I'm not a delusionist so I will continue to talk about these things as well of course this morning I said what the EU is doing now I said what I am not very fond of in, in, in that area and we will see how that will continue. There is definitely, as we would say, a lot of space above left. That's another German saying. And I'll see you in my next video. Bis gleich.